hello. Come gather, children. We didn't even tell you. We we went on a we done did a road trip from Texas to I California. Like we no, we didn't because we weren't able to fucking our other video didn't come out, so we couldn't talk about it. I think before that, the one we filmed. We kind of said we were gonna do it. I think. Okay. Well, we went on a road trip. Yeah, it was cool. We. Um, I feel like. I swear we said this. Maybe we did. I don't know. But. Yeah, we did. I remember I was telling them I got to go see where you grew up. And it was a lot to see. I think that was just in the vlog. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Go follow our vlog channel where we'll be posting stuff about it. All right. So this is episode 173. Wait. 174. Run the intro. Dude, I'm matching the the wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Somebody <laughs> told me I need a blood. <laughs> yeah, because they said she's turning into a vampire or something. They didn't say that. That would have been a compliment. Um, I know I'm white. I get told by my family all the time how white I am. <laughs> all right. So thanks. So uh, yeah. today we're gonna do a video by Hoog. We've done a few of his before. But is what's inside the world's most exclusive club? Pause. <laughs> pause right now and see if you can guess it. A dinosaur. All right. So it's Brigain. I've heard about this club because I like techno and stuff. And I make that music. And I know it's like a lot of... I guess it's it's very like um, exclusive and only they allow certain people in. I've heard. I don't know. I heard, yeah, they, so do some, only I heard they do crazy cool. shit in there though. Like kinky stuff. All right. Anyway, so let's begin. <laughs> this video is sponsored by AnyDesk. I don't want to go anyway. In Berlin, there is a building. A building few enter, but many try. It is the hardest club to access on the planet. Britney Hundreds Spears of people are rejected in a night. No one, except those lucky enough to get in, knows what it looks like on the inside. That is, until now. I will show you what is inside the world's most notorious nightclub. I'll show you <laughs> what's inside Barakai. Barakai. Sophie is a 23-year-old German who grew up in Bavaria. She doesn't speak to her mother, but she does stay in contact with her Volkswagen-employed father. A year ago, she moved to Berlin to pursue a career as an artist. Nice. She works mostly at cafes, though. Her backpack is filled with multiple outfits. Some who get into Berghain stay for days. For Sophie, what? her bag is a tool, a signal to the strictest bouncers in the world that she's no amateur. It's cold in her fishnets. The line starts to move. What are we in 1949, <laughs> Berlin was separated by ideology between East and West. Their visions on urban planning divided too. The Second World War destroyed homes. New ones had to be built and both sides wanted to flex. I speak, of course, of West Berlin, a huge, vibrant city with its great main road, comparable in breadth and luxury of its stores to our Champs-Élysées. In the West, the center became the Breitscheidplatz, the Kurfürstendamm, its most attractive boulevard. Shops where you can find everything, cafes, restaurants that are always full, and especially at night. In the East, it became Alexanderplatz, and right next to it, the East German elites planned the construction of a grand new socialist boulevard, the Stalin Allee. The Stalin Allee is the Grundstein des Aufbaus zum Sozialismus in the Hauptstadt Deutschlands, Berlin. The first socialist street in East Germany. It would increase the amount of homes and try to advertise the strength of socialism through concrete and mortar. It also created Berghain. Regel 1. Die Stadt als Siedlungsform ist nicht zufällig entstanden. I said, <laughs> Here we go. Together we must rave. Okay. In the 1950s, the DDR adopts the 16 principles DDR. of urban design. A lesson on urban planning. From <laughs> I'm sorry. DDR. <laughs> Did you guys ever play this game called DDR? And it is Dance Dance Revolution. How on Dance brand. Dance Revolution. <laughs> yeah, it was super popular when we were in high I school. I used to love that game. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. 
Russian parent to a German child. Das Ziel des Städtebaus ist die harmonische Befriedigung des menschlichen Anspruchs auf Arbeit, Wohnung, Kultur und Erholung. The Soviets said that organized housing blocks should be built first. So the East Germans did. They built six to seven story tall buildings with restaurants, movie theaters, and other amenities. This was a time when the refrigerator was a symbol for luxury. Mm. The apartments in Stalin Alley had space built for them. Uh, Regel 7 bei Städten, die an einem Fluss liegen, ist eine der Hauptadern und die architektonische Achse der Fluss mit seinen Uferstraßen. The Soviets said to build parallel next to water. The Stalin Alley was. Die vielgeschossige Bauweise ist wirtschaftlicher als die ein- oder zweigeschossige. Sie entspricht auch dem Charakter der Großstadt. The boulevard was built with public transportation, modern amenities, and with restaurants and worker buildings. But the Stalin Alley needed one more thing to complete it. A plant to power it. In 1953, the DDR constructs a heating plant. It's 1.30 in the morning. Sophie is closer. She's at a point in the line where her vibe of depressed art student will be vital in getting her in. If she even gives off the slightest hint that her father sends her more than a thousand euros each month, her chances will be ruined. Right in front of her is a group of loud British men equipped with puffy North Face jackets and piles of makeup that happen to come with a British girl attached. Gut, Sophie thinks to herself. The Brits will be rejected mm. in an instant. The bouncers It'll will be more likely good. to accept a familiar German after. When the Berlin Wall fell, East Berlin became a shell. While the West filled, in the East, buildings emptied. The city was sliced in half by the wall, and after its stitches, the city remained Nearly a three cripple. Million East Germans have yeah. asked for visas. Where almost every single European capital is an economic hub for their country, Berlin isn't. If France lost Paris, it'd be poorer. If Britain and London, the same. But if Germany, Berlin, it would be richer. It doesn't really have any major companies. It isn't the home base for a tech behemoth, and its pull for capital is weaker than Munich or Hamburg. But Berlin does have one other thing that the others don't. It has edge. The leftover buildings in the east became abandoned breeding grounds for techno. Ostgut was regarded as Berlin's most important gay club. Run by Michael Tufel and Norbert Dormann, it was a place for a different type of music and offered protection for different types of behavior. Uh, I'm, I do wonder, I know a lot of artists in Germany, uh, like with techno and everything, like because I follow a lot of artists over there. They, a lot of them are from Germany and then the Netherlands and stuff. But I do wonder how um, open the the culture is to LGBT and to like different people because I know it's a lot of open. other. Yeah, I would think so too. But just like confirming with you guys because I know a lot of different countries, it's like hit or miss if some are and some aren't. But really, yeah. with techno music. Well, yeah, like I'm saying, some countries, they're, I meant like the culture from like the, the government and the police and the, and stuff like that. Not like mainly the people. I know the people are open to it. I mean, I maybe, I don't know. I, don't know. I would think, yeah, I would and think. They are, you can tell. Yeah. I've never been to a gay club and it wasn't playing electronic music. No, that's not Ever. what I'm saying. I'm saying in Germany, like in Berlin. I mean, they, they did you not hear what he just said? Yeah, the, this is like where they would go. Yeah, it was like a safe space. No, I understand that. I just mean like the culture, meaning like the government and the police and the, like society, if they're open with it. Oh, so you don't mean like the music scene? Not not specifically, no. Oh, I mean like the culture okay. of like the, the of Berlin, like the government, society, like politically police. Yeah, exactly, it? exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I know here in the U.S., we I think we're one of the most technically open in the world depends where you are <laughs> yeah i mean yeah that's true but in 2003 it had to close the city had set its sights on a brand new stadium Oskut's owners had to find a new empty building 
Sophie can see the bouncer. The Brits are the only thing standing between her and entering Berghain. In front of them is a man named Sven, not someone you'd want to argue with. Tonight he'll have to fight the fragile male British ego. Oi, all right, mate. Guten Tag, mein friend. Heute nicht. Jamesy, what does he mean? Heute nicht. Mate, are you taking the mickey? Nein. We've been waiting out here for fucking hours. Does he mean we should come back at night? The British men were pulled away by two bouncers. Sophie became excited, too excited. She composed herself and made herself think about the banality of existence, and then about how her thinking about that made her edgy and cool, producing the perfect combination of facial muscles that could get her into the club. It was her turn now. Sven was in front of her. Sven began working for Oskut. The strict door policy he helps administer is not just a marketing tactic, it's necessary. Ich habe die Verantwortung, das Berghain zu einem sicheren Ort für Menschen zu machen, die einfach kommen, um die Musik zu genießen und zu feiern. To keep people away from the prying eyes of adults who were once kids that told on others in elementary school, Sven protects those who would be told on. Der Club hat sich aus der Berliner Spulenszene der 90er Jahre entwickelt. Es ist mir wichtig, etwas von diesem Erbe zu bewahren, dass es sich immer noch wie ein einladender Ort für die ursprünglichen Clubbesucher anfühlt. To get through Sven and his team of bouncers, there are many... Yeah, they're super, from what I've heard, um, they're super strict about people taking photos and videos and stuff like that. Um, Sounds like it, if, they don't, if they're so strict on who gets in. Yeah, yeah there's a lot, this, well, a, a few of the main companies that throw raves here in LA, they're like, they do that too. Like where they, they'll either put like the thing on your phone, like the sticker and stuff like that, but you can take it off obviously, but then you I can get kicked out. I think it's more to not be disruptive. But also a lot of those ones are illegal, so that's probably why too. Yeah, that I think is one part. But I also think there's a they're trying to get it to a point where it's like just be in the moment of it. Also, I don't be- I don't think that's there. I, I think, think I don't think they're looking at you like just live life. In Obviously the not, but I think that's part of it. I think they don't want you to be disruptive. <laughs> I think that's what it is, so that you're not bothering anyone. Yeah, for sure, I could see that too. I did see when I was at one of them, someone with a fucking flash, just like blast the flash on. And I'm just like, that, that that's annoying. Because if it's like dark and people are like vibing and then yeah. just a like huge flash comes on. It like sobers you up. That's a, that, that is annoying, I will say. Yeah. I agree. Unspoken rules people think you should follow. Be in a small group, wear black, look bored and somewhat indifferent, do not speak, and if spoken to, speak German. But these rules really aren't that black and white. Getting into bear kind comes down fundamentally to a vibe. A vibe, bro. I gotta check your order. Sophie's identity was crafted through years of not eating enough by a distant, emotionally unavailable workaholic parent and an arts education filled with regret. Tonight, her vibe is enough. Sven nods and lets her pass. When we speak of Berghain, we are mainly speaking about this section. There's also the Halle, which is a much larger chamber that's on the backside of the building. But this area is more publicly accessible and does not have a cult following surrounding it. When we speak of Berghain, we're actually talking about four floors, each with separate clubs located here. The most recently Damn. opened club is called Soile, located on the ground floor. The Berghain dance floor is on the main floor, and then there's the Panorama Bar, located on the top floor. Berghain is where they play techno music, which is open from Saturday evening until Monday. The Panorama Bar, on the other hand, is for lighter house music. Just the last and fifth place is the male exclusive Laboratory. It has a separate, more mysterious entrance at the side of the building, which goes to the basement of Berghain. In the main building, there are also dark rooms for play, but the lab is the more exclusive and restricted location. Einerseits braucht es Nischen und Rückzugsräume. Menschen sind Höhlenbewohner und mögen enge Räume. Andererseits braucht es freie Bewegungsflächen, die ein reibungsloses Cruisen ermöglichen und Räume, in denen sich Gäste präsentieren yeah. können. Sometimes Berghain and the lab are connected via Säule and only men are admitted to the entire building. But the majority of times, it's separate. It's misogynist. Even in gay culture, it's misogynist. Separate. Die Betreiber wollten einen Verein, mit dem sie keinen Stress haben. Weder mit der Baubehörde, noch mit dem Brandschutz, noch mit der Polizei. The interior was designed by Studio Carhart, who had to navigate a fine line between maximizing freedom while minimizing chaos. Ein Club ist wie ein Kindergarten. Man muss mit dem Unerwarteten rechnen. In den Gitterrosten, die wir im Berghain verbaut haben, sind die Löcher entweder so klein, dass man seinen Finger nicht hineinstecken kann, 
oder so groß, dass er nicht stecken bleibt. Für die Böden glatt geschliffener Asphalt. Der lässt sich fugenlos einbauen und ist Kaugummi-resistent. Bergheim has an ice cream bar, multiple normal hm. ones, dark rooms and large unisex bathrooms. There's also sometimes an opening to a garden on the outside. Im Berghain haben wir die Geländer an den Treppen, die es bereits gab, um etliche Zentimeter erhöht und die Handläufe abgerundet, oh, damit man sehen, keine yeah. Bierflasche darauf abstellen kann. An den Geländern führen Metallwände bis zum Boden, um zu verhindern, dass umgetretene Flaschen hinunterrollen. Die Badresen sind nicht besonders kantig. Und in vielen Durchgängen haben wir Möglichkeiten geschaffen, sich bequem anzulehnen oder hinzusetzen. For a club that is based on exclusivity and secrecy, it needs to be safe enough, so that it can protect itself from having to be opened up to the outside. Niemand sollte auf der Toilette zusammenbrechen und erst am Montagmittag gefunden werden. What's preventing it from having to be opened up to the outside? I don't get it. I, I don't know, to be honest. I don't They're know. They're saying like outside people would have to step in if something shady was going on. And is that what they're saying? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Wir haben einige der Stahltüren mit Gummi gefüllt, weil die Leute, die draußen warten, mit den Fäusten dagegen schlagen, um endlich reinzukommen, während schon vier Leute in der Kabine sind. Der Club soll auch instinktiv funktionieren. Das heißt, es gibt kaum Sackgassen. Man findet aus jeder Ecke eines Raumes den Weg heraus. Auch die Toilettenanlagen sind so gestaltet, dass man im Kreis um die Kabinen herumgehen kann. Berghain may be exclusive because it's good for marketing. It might have an air of secrecy so that more people try and get in. But at this point, it should be clear to you that what's inside is underwhelming to explain. I can show you a floor plan, stainless steel bathrooms, and a Stalinist facade. But I can't make you smell the sweat, hear the droning sound of techno, or feel the comfort some find within its walls. Berghain was a fortress born from a time of authoritarian restriction. Today, its rules remain to protect a place beyond definition. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, consider checking out the link on screen to grab That's a dope. I think I would love to play there eventually. Like that'd be so cool to get invited there. I'm I'm sure it's very difficult, but that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't really care to go, <laughs> but I would want to experience it. It seems like it, there's so me, much history with the music. I was gonna say I think the marketing and the history of it is what's cool. Yeah, and maybe that's what they're trying to preserve but by I, keeping it exclusive. I'm not sitting here thinking, I wonder how much fun they're having. Because how much fun can you be having? It's it's music, alcohol. Like, you've done it, you've done it a hundred times. I mean, it's not but only alcohol. Are you kidding me? I'm pretty sure there's a <laughs> sex club going no on. Shit, no, no <laughs> shit, babe. No shit. No <laughs> shit. I cracked the code. Yeah. No, it would be interesting just to see. I would get fucking anxious, though, in the line. Waiting up to see what Sven is gonna say, they'd probably deny it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> even wait in that line unless I knew I was getting in. So most likely, I would never. Wait. That's the risk you gotta take. Stop! Not risky. <laughs> no, um, I it, would just be like, you know Great, what? I could have been. So I could have gone out to eat. I bet some, maybe some of you have been in there. So if you have, let us know some stories. Yeah, something tells me it's not as difficult to get in. I mean, we're not British. We're American, but I can put on an accent. No, they they want Germans. I think they want. Yeah, you to but but I can pretend I'm from somewhere else. It doesn't even have to be America because everybody hates us. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, let us know. I feel like you know a British person when you see one. They do. They are known to be rowdy too. Nothing against you guys, but like in and the Netherlands to too. In the Netherlands, I heard they kind of like got fed up with um, British tourists in Amsterdam. You guys are next in line. <laughs> us Americans have. <laughs> We're paid cousins. We're distant cousins. Yeah. Paid our dues. Um, <laughs> all right. If you like that video, guys, please like and subscribe, and make sure to head over to our vlog channel. Okay. But and subscribe there as well. All right. We appreciate y'all, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>